Welcome to Redeemer United Church of Christ, located in Sussex, Wisconsin. I am Ann Weed, and I am the liturgist for today. Please take a minute to fill out our who's where in the chair, either online or in person. We appreciate you connecting with us this morning. Here at Redeemer, we are learning to love more. Our pastor is the Reverend Julie Eklund. Today we celebrate the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Our welcoming music today is provided by Dan Stolper and Mary Doparella. the cry of my heart to follow you it is the cry of my heart to be close to you it is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life teach me your holy ways O oh lord how oh, i can walk in your truth teach me your holy Please join in our opening meditation. When you are ready, let your hands rest in a position that comes naturally and comfortably to you. Take a deep breath in and let it out slowly. Continue to breathe slowly. Focus on deep and full breaths, eventually entering a natural rhythm. When a thought comes, acknowledge the thought, let it pass, and go back to focusing on your breath. Keep your consciousness steady as you softly close your eyes. As you do so, push away any negativity you may be feeling. Instead, welcome thoughts of peace, joy, and protection. Relax every part of your body beginning with the muscles in your face, now the muscles in your neck, your shoulders, your arms, right down to the tips of your fingers. Relax your chest, 
your abdomen, your legs, right down to the tips of your toes. Keep breathing deeply until you enter a state of complete relaxation. Allow your breathing to take up all the space in the room. Feel it expand beyond this space until it is just you and your breath sitting alone in the world. Imagine that the air around your body is made up of tiny particles of happiness and joy. Slowly inhale them into your body with full and gentle breaths. Welcome those tiny specks of joy and happiness right into your soul. Your body is now welcome, ready to welcome in joy, happiness, companionship, and love. Your entire body is just waiting to be filled with those delightful atoms carried to you by your very own breath. Notice how your breath fills up your body with that happiness, with that joy, with love and light. As you let out each breath, allow it to carry away all of your troubles, all worries, all negative thoughts. Now that you are only filled with joy and happiness, it is time to imagine more for yourself. Imagine yourself walking along a great body of water just before sunset. As you look out over the water, the sun hangs above it in gentle waves, casting its rays down across the water. Feel the warmth of the sun on your face. Hear the seagulls calling from overhead. Smell the fresh, salty sea air as it blows off the water. Enjoy being in this beautiful place, the Sea of Galilee. As you walk along the beach, feel the wet sand beneath your feet and enjoy the freedom of having no place else you need to be. Notice a small bird scurry across the beach and pause, seeming to look out at the sun. It is enjoying the scene just as you are. There is joy here. There is peace here. There is light here. Bask in it. You've had a long day and it is time to rest. Find a place that suits you. Perhaps you'll rest at the shoreline where the water laps gently at your feet, or maybe further back in the fine, dry sand where you can soak in the heat of the sun. Or maybe you choose a spot to rest among the boulders that line the back of the beach. Find your place and take some time to simply be. As you do, watch the sun as it slowly creeps closer to the horizon. Its rays sparkling across the water's surface, filling your vision with color and light. After a moment, you feel someone's presence. It's warm and caring presence. You can feel joy, peace, and light radiant from, radiating from them. You turn and there he is, Jesus, your friend, your companion, your confidant. Of course he's here. This is a Sea of Galilee. But more importantly, you know he is always near. As you look to Jesus, you are ensured of his love for you. It is unconditional. It is honest. He says nothing but sits down next to you and together you watch the sunset. In addition to the moment being peaceful, the moment becomes prayerful. You can sense his prayers and you begin to pray as well. Together you lift up your hearts to God, sharing all that is heavy, all that is light, and together you lift it all up. You look over to Jesus and he's smiling, overjoyed just to be with you. Both of you are basking in the glow of the beach, covered in light, filled with joy and peace. Spend some time now with Jesus. There's no need to speak. Simply be with him and enjoy the general splendor of the moment. After a time, Jesus looks to you, offers you a parting greeting, and begins to go on his way. As you watch him go, you feel your spirit lift. You know that you can return to this place at any time to have a moment to yourself or to spend time in Jesus' company. There is joy here. There is peace here. 
There is light here, and you're always welcome to it. You look out over the darkening sea once more, watch the last rays of sun fade, and feel the coolness of the evening air blow in. It is time to make your way home and return to the world refreshed. When you are ready, begin to focus on your body, keeping your eyes closed, slowly wiggling your toes and fingers, feeling the floor beneath your feet, stretch your arms and legs, feeling the chair that you rest in. Finally, when you are ready, open your eyes, take in the space that surrounds you, knowing that you are not alone.
How many ways are the Spirit moving, God speaking, and Jesus comforting that we do not notice because we are too focused on the storm up ahead? May we be brave and bold as we walk with Jesus. And let us confess together. God, our gentle parent, bring calm to the storms that batter us and blow us off course. We do not need to walk on water. We need only walk through our lives as whole and holy children who recognize that your love unites us, buoys us, and carries us forward to face miraculous challenges in a complex world. Help us to see through the clutter of daily existence in order to focus on what is most important, love, compassion, faith, and connection. Amen. Even when we doubt, God is with us. God walks beside us, through us, with us, in all we do. Miracles are among us if we see ourselves with God's loving gaze. Our scripture today is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Jesus insisted that the disciples get into the boat and precede him to the other side. Having sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray, remaining there alone as night fell. Meanwhile, the boat already a thousand yards from shore, was being tossed about in the waves, which had been raised by the fierce winds. At about three in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the lake. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and in fear they began to cry out. Jesus hastened to reassure them, Don't worry, it's me. Don't be afraid. Peter spoke up and said, if it is really you, tell me to come to you across the water. Come, Jesus said. So Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. He began to sink and cried out, Save me! Jesus immediately stretched out his hand and caught Peter. You have so little faith, Jesus said to him. Why did you doubt? Once they had climbed in, into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat showed great reverence, declaring to Jesus, you are indeed God's own. These are the words of our still speaking God. Now it's time for a child in all of us. If anyone would like to come forward with me. Hello, good morning. Have you been enjoying summer break from school? Yeah, what kind of things have you been doing? Went to the park? That's fun. What else? You went on vacation? What'd you do? Up north, did you go camping? Yeah? In hammocks? Wow, that's fun. Was there anything that you did while you were there, other like besides sleeping in hammocks? Um, like fish. Fish. And did you go swimming? Yeah. 
You went swimming? Did anybody else go swimming? Who's been swimming this summer? Who's been swimming this summer? Okay, there are a few people who like to go swimming. All right, what's your favorite thing about swimming? Which, which do you like to do a certain move in the water? You like going underwater? Do you like to see how long you can stay under? Do you wear goggles? Yeah. Do you like, you like to go underwater? Do you like the pool better or lake or river or ocean? What's your favorite? Lake or river? Pool. Who likes lake or river? Who likes pool? Mm, pretty close. You like in the pool too, yeah? You just like swimming. Okay. All right, well, I have a little pool. So I want you to pretend that this is a pool. Can you pretend this is a pool? Or a lake or a river, whatever you like. Okay? Yes? You're pretending? Okay. All right. And then I have, I have a rock and I have a rubber ducky. What do you think the rock's going to do when it goes swimming? It's going to sink. Who thinks it's going to sink? Okay, very good. All right, what do you think is going to happen when the duck goes swimming? It's going to float. All right, we're going to experiment. You ready? Okay, here comes a rock. It sunk. All right, here comes the duck. It's floating. We were right. Have any of you ever had swimming lessons? Yeah? What is one of the first things you learn when you have swimming lessons? How to swim across a pool and swim back? Has anyone was ever had those first swimming lessons where they teach you how to float like this? Yeah. yeah? Have you ever done that? And you have to like go like this and float? Yeah? Have you ever sunk to the bottom? Yeah. yeah. So humans can do what? Sink or float, right? Yeah. So Jesus tells us in our scripture today, we can do both, but we have to believe what Jesus wants us to do, right? So when Jesus says, come on the water, he, Peter was able to go on the water, but then he got scared and then he started sinking, right? But with Jesus, we can do both. We can either float, right? Or we can sink. And when we need to float, we have to believe in Jesus, right? All right, can you help me pray? Okay. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for allowing us to walk on water when we believe in you. Amen. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come hoping to believe in your miracles. Help us with our disbelief. And may the meditation of our hearts and the words upon my lips be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, our gospel lesson this morning picks up exactly where we left off last week. No, no skipping. As soon as the 5,000 were fed, Jesus is in, 
when as soon as those 5,000 people are fed, when they remember, we talked about they were searching for healing and wholeness in their lives. Now Jesus has sent the disciples ahead of him by boat. Now remember, he was originally trying to get away from the people. Remember that? And then they followed him. So now Jesus finally gets his alone time that he tried before. He heads up to the mountain alone to pray. So while Jesus is following his spiritual practice of connecting with God, the disciples find themselves in the midst of a storm. Then scripture says that at about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the lake and the disciples freak out that a ghost has appeared. Can you relate to that? Yeah? Yeah, I know I can. Like 3 a.m. is often the time when I get awoken from sleep with some kind of direction from the Holy Spirit. It's always three o'clock. It doesn't happen regularly, but it's almost always three o'clock. So it's noticeable when it happens. And Jesus, he tries to reassure them that, but Peter, Peter is skeptical and basically, basically asks Jesus to give Peter the power to walk on water too. And at first it worked, right? Peter stepped out in faith, took the leap, and things seemed to be going as Peter had hoped, right? But then Peter became focused on the strong winds and he began to sink. Let's be real, this is so relatable. Is it relatable? Yeah. When I ask you questions, feel free to say, yeah, mm-hmm, amen, yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're in this together, right? So we might be distracted because there's this huge miracle, right, of Jesus and Peter and walking on water. And sometimes the real message becomes unclear because we're like, who can walk on water, right, you know? But the disciples have just assisted Jesus with feeding about 5,000 families that were in search of healing and wholeness. And then Jesus walks to them on water. They were just part of an act of abundance. They were just involved in a miracle. And then they start witnessing a miracle. They were the ones handing out the food, right? And yet, some wind came and then they got shaky. Come on now, right? They are easily distracted. They are being pulled away to focus on the weather. That's what everybody talks about, right? We don't know what to say. Isn't that right? You walk in, oh, yeah, the, the weather's great. Or, hey, we need a rain, don't you? you know, that's what everybody talks about, right? And they got distracted with that. But that's real. That's real, right? That's real. When you are working on something and things start to gain momentum and you start seeing some success, but then some challenge comes about and you're like, now you have to deal with the challenge. But what happens if you put all your energy and focus on this big challenge, the challenge can consume you. Did anyone read the UCC Daily Devotional this morning by Talitha Arnold? I knew Lisa, you would. Sue did? Only a couple of you? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna share it. This is her story. This is what she said about the scripture this morning. She says, I've never tried to walk on water, but the summer I was four, I almost drowned trying to dog paddle. We were visiting a couple who lived by a lake in Northern Arizona. Coming from Phoenix, anywhere with trees and water was paradise. After sitting with the adults on the front porch, my siblings and I finally convinced the husband to take us out in his old rowboat. So dressed in regular clothes, no swimsuit, I discovered that a wooden boat on a sunny day was even hotter than a shaded porch. So I began to whine, it's hot. I'm hot, too hot. My siblings first ignored me, 
My complaints grew louder until they had enough. If you're so hot, one said, why don't you jump in the water and cool off? So I did. I was doing a fine dog paddle until I heard my mother cry, Talitha doesn't know how to swim. I remembered I couldn't swim. I quit paddling and began to sink until the boat's owner heated the alarm and fished me out of the water. Matthew says the wind frightened Peter. I wonder if the disciples or his own inner voice also reminded him he couldn't walk on water. Whatever the source, it drowned out Jesus' assuring words, and he started to sink until Jesus grabbed him just as the old man grabbed me and delivered him up onto the boat. Sometimes the voice of alarm saves us, as my mother's did, but sometimes the voices around us can drown out the one voice we need most to hear. Have no fear. Come, you can do it. Perhaps you can relate to this story, a time in your life that you got so focused on the wind that you couldn't see the presence of Jesus walking towards you, only a ghost. Perhaps there was a time in your life that fear had such a tight hold on you that you couldn't recognize Jesus coming to be with you and offer you healing and wholeness. I'm thinking of Redeemer right now. We've had a lot of successes within the last month. We were just talking about this in council. So let's share. Let's talk about what are some of the miracles we have witnessed. Linda. Wow. <laughs> so the word spreading. The snowball is turning an avalanche. Let me repeat that. So Linda contacted the librarian at the Menominee Falls Library and about our book study, Think Again. And she was just so excited that she shared it with all the libraries in Waukesha County. She posted on her LinkedIn. Linda shared what she shared and like things are just moving along, right? Abundance. Awesome, thank you. What else, what else? Bob. Yes. We pass out 800 icy pops at the Lions Day Parade. But there, wasn't any left over. there wasn't any left over. We ran out. So next year we might have to get like 1,200. Not 5,000, but 1,200. And how many bookmarks did we hand out? Same. And we ran out, right? What else? Sue, Prairie Fest, yeah, we had a successful Prairie Fest, over 100 people here, right? And they were interested and wanting to know about native plants and how to help the earth be sustainable. Fred. Okay, awesome. We had a family come because of the bookmarks. That, that's a miracle. You survived the sabbatical. Nothing cat catastrophic happened. No fire, right? No fire. Hey, that's a blessing, right? Yeah. John. John's a living miracle with his health. Yeah.
Yes, amen. Let's see, I wrote down a few. Yes, National Light Out. We gave out uh, 200 and I have it down, 280, I think. 280, yes. Purple, reusable, gift bags. Reusable was the key, the key thing. We had, you know, that had to represent Redeemer, so it had to be reusable. Gift bag at the National Night Out. Oh, I have one right here. We gave out 280 of these. Woo! Right? Here's another one. I don't know how accurate. Oh, yes. You won second place in your first what? Horse show. Oh, exciting. Congratulations. There you go. Yeah. Miracles. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we have kept 4,000 pounds of plastic out of the landfills, and we now have eight benches. Those benches are amazing. We can never have enough of those benches, in my opinion. And I have, oh, we have nine? We have nine. We have nine benches. Thank you, Fred. And... I don't know how accurate this is, but according to Facebook, as of Friday, when I looked at it, it told me that we had 70 people view our worship service from last Sunday. Let's say half of those people watched that. That's still really good, right? That's awesome. Things are happening. Jesus is working. Jesus is feeding the 5,000 and walking on water. And yes, we have a couple of heavy winds hitting us right now too. Let's acknowledge them. We have some winds, right? We've got our water situation. Eh, not the best. And we have this deficit issue. Not the best, right? And we have to address those things. We can't ignore them in hopes that they're going to fix themselves, but we can't let ourselves sink. We don't want Jesus to tell us, you have so little faith, why do you doubt? Does anyone want to hear that from Jesus? Not me. So we've got to keep building on the miracles and climb into the boat with Jesus so the wind will die down. The NRSV version says, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Now the disciples and Jesus were not exempt from the winds. They still had to face them. Being a person of faith doesn't mean that we are exempt from having to face the challenges of life. Absolutely not. It would be really nice. I think everyone would subscribe to be a person of faith that that were true. But it's not, right? Jesus faced the same challenges all of us do. When Jesus was doing his work, there was always someone or something trying to work against him. Right? Right? Yeah. For instance, I was watching Hard Knocks last night with Dustin. I know, I was told this morning that because it's about the Jets, we're not supposed to talk about that in Wisconsin. So I apologize because that doesn't register with me. I apologize. But the Jets head coach, I don't know his name, sorry. And I don't know exactly if these are the exact words because I didn't write it down. But he said, if you're doing something great, there's always going to be the haters. So let the haters hate. There's always going to be something, right? Especially when things are going well, that are going to try to move you off course. But when we keep getting in the boat with Jesus, instead of letting the challenges sink us, is when we can be witnesses of the miracles. They are happening. 
And we need to be in awe of them. We need to celebrate them. And we need to give thanksgiving for all of them. Because the winds will come. Recognize it is Jesus on the water. And the wind ceased. Amen. And let us join in singing our song of reflection. I think, I think you'll recognize the tune we're going to use for this. The prayer person of the week is Dorothy Egri. Contact information is found in your bulletin or will be in this week's Redeemer Reminders. We have a request from the Congregation Care Group requesting prayers for Cindy. May she make better decisions with her life. The Reverend Keith Jones is requesting prayers for himself. He's having uh, problems with sudden double vision and a damaged right knee meniscus. Prayer request from Pastor Julie. Please pray for Jane Lazarevic as she recovers from surgery. Pastor Julie also asked for prayers for the family of Tammy Flish, who was memorialized here yesterday. For Jane Lazarevic, please pray for clarity for my sister Cindy. From Dustin. Please pray for Demirian Peterson as he recovers from a, do a torn ACL. From Catherine Schaefer and Michael Horn, both are having challenges in their new jobs, unsupportive management and red flags in both their new jobs we started, Mike and April. 
and Catherine in May. Those are the requests. May we now enter a time of prayer and meditation. God of awe and wonder, we rejoice to hear your faithful word of righteousness and peace. Bless us with bold belief even in the darkness of the night and the assault of life storms, that we may be messengers of your justice and give thanks for all you have provided. This day we rejoice for Dorothy Egri and the many ways she has blessed the church. We lift her to your care and ask for wholeness. We rejoice for the many miracles we witness in our daily lives and celebrate the expectation of new ways that miracles will be revealed. Creator God, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind, and spirit through loving your creation and our sisters and brothers. Open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the needs of the church and the world. We lift up all those affected by gun violence, mass tragedies, natural disasters, and war. Today we recognize the people of Maui and ask for their safety and protection. May their needs be met. We lift up all those that go without each day May we do the work to ensure housing, education, health care, food, and sustainable employment. May those who have been elected as public servants do the work of justice and peace. We lift up all those that struggle with addiction and those struggling with their mental health. May they receive kind and compassionate care, and may they find wholeness and peace. We lift up all those struggling with their physical health this day. Jane, Damarion, Keith, may your healing hand uplift them. May the Holy Spirit guide and direct their medical care. And may their loved ones find strength in the hands of Jesus. We lift up to your care, Cindy, and ask for clarity in her life. May the Spirit speak and guide her. We lift up Mike and Catherine and ask for your word and guidance to be over their lives. Help them to find wholeness and direction. We lift up all those that grieve this day. The family of Tammy Flitch. May they be surrounded in your comforting embrace. Through the storms of life, O oh God, you are with your people in the person of Jesus, your son. Calm our fears and strengthen our faith that we may never doubt his presence among us, but proclaim that he is your son, risen from the dead, living forever and ever. And hear us in one voice as we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we go into the invitation to generosity. Ushers, please collect the offering. The gifts of faith comes to us in many ways, and the miracles we witness are not always so obvious. May the manifestation of God's great abundance in our lives inspire us to generosity in as many ways as we see God's love unfurl. The gold can is for the Women's Center of, of Waukesha. The Women's Center provides free and comprehensive services designed to address the issues of domestic violence, sexual assault, and abuse. 
Women's Center includes emergency shelter for abused families, transitional living, counseling, child abuse prevention programming, legal advocacy, and employment counseling. They also provide Hispanic outreach, community education programs, information and referral services, and 24-hour hotline. You may also give your offerings online at our website or mail into the church. Many thanks for your generosity. Rick, I need that so I can pray. Actually, you're praying. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for revealing yourself to us in ways both big and small, in ways miraculous and mundane. Use our gifts to further your loving justice in our communities near and far. Amen. Please join us in singing our departing song. So I was received a text from my amazing husband. I got the quote wrong. If you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. So hate away. Obviously, we're doing something right if you got to talk about us and we don't play you until week four. So as you go forth, go forth. Believing in miracles, go forth 
willing to step out on the boat, onto the water when Jesus calls, go forth, willing to be popping. Amen. Thank you, Anne. You are an amazing liturgist. Okay, here are faith and action opportunities. We'd like to thank everyone who made this morning possible for worship, Dan, Mary, and John, Usher, Bonnie, Seedlitz, Greeter, Rick, and Nancy Volbrick, and Zoom coordinator, Jim Showalter. We are in need of some new volunteers to be a Zoom coordinator for the 10 a.m. service. If you're willing to learn, please sign up in the grade hall or online. <clears throat> Sunday, August 20th, after worship, the opening and affirming core team will be hosting a guest family to speak on gender transition. Please plan to attend food and fellowship to follow the presentation. Thursday, August 24th, Redeemer volunteers at Community Banquet. Please sign up online or in the Great Hall. The Think Again book study has officially been scheduled for September 7th, 28th, September 7th and 28th, and October 19th. Please sign up online for the dates you can attend. A light meal is provided, and a free will donation will be taken to help cover the cost of the food. Contact Linda Graber smith if you have any questions. Pastor Julie invites you to a pasta dinner and sabbatical presentation on Wednesday, August 23rd at 6 p.m. in the room behind the fireplace. Please sign up in the grade hall or electronically when the email goes out this week. Redeemer will be participating in the Alzheimer's Association Walk to End Alzheimer's on Saturday, September 9th at Frame Park. We are in need of walkers, a volunteer to run the Redeemer table, and for donations. Please sign up online through Redeemer Reminders. For more information, please contact Rick Eckert or Claire Boitler Cruz. Our Farm to Fork fundraiser will be on Sunday, September 24th. Please save the date as we will need volunteers as well as people to help sell tickets and attend the dinner. The CCEM team meeting will start immediately after worship behind the fireplace. Remember, this is a committee that we're all part of, so please come. It's going to be immediately after this service. And that brings up, then that pretty much wraps it up. Go forth and take action. Oh, we have one more one more announcement. Sorry, I didn't see you. Yeah, P Pastor Julie mentioned one of our big wins, uh, the water. So I just want to give you a little bit of an update on uh, what's where we're at. Um, well, the water first tested bad in November. We started working on it at the end of December. It was at that time coliform bacteria, which we're not allowed to have any. It's relatively low risk, though. Um, we, the things we've done have improved the water, but it hasn't uh, uh, stayed clean for a long period. Uh, a while back, we tested positive for E. coli twice. Uh, it, that's much more severe, uh, uh, but then it went away. I think they were bad tests, but recently we've tested positive for E. coli again. So end of uh, July test showed E. coli in the water. It comes from the gut of uh, an animal. So it's, it's, it's much worse than the coliform. Um, so we're still working on it. We don't know what the solution is. All the tests have been very convoluted results. It doesn't make sense what we're seeing as results. That's why it's taken a while to get to the source. But I want to warn you, the water does have E. coli. At least some of the tests, three of eight on August 8th, had E. coli in, and two didn't. Now, why? That is part of the conundrum. Treat it as if there's E. coli everywhere, which means wash your hands and then use san hand sanitizer after it. Do not drink the water. Washing dishes is a problem. The dishwasher supposedly is safe. But if you wash them, you got to use bleach. It's, it's a, it's, I just, so we're still working on it. Uh, it is our cur current big wind.
Have a good day, everyone. And those of you that want to stay uh, for Zoom for the CCMT meeting, please do.